island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Fat Controller's railway was busier than ever. The engines rushed off their wheels with goods and passengers. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, bulbs. Tell you silence for the well-known voice. Let me tell you an engine from Scotland will arrive tomorrow to help with the goods work. Next morning, the fat controller was surprised to find two engines in the yard. Good day, he said. What are your numbers? Can I say, sir? Said one. We lost them on the way. Finished the other. What are your names? Donal and Doggy, sir. Good. I shall ask your controller which of you belongs here. He'll be no help to you, sir. We only gave ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, rumbled the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find out who and send him away. Soon the twins were given new numbers. Donald was nine. And Douglas ten. They went to work with Duck in the yard. They handled the coaches and trucks with ease. Duck was the best. Take my tip," advised Duck. "Watch out for Gordon, Henry, and James. They're sure to be trouble." That night, the twins backed into the shed and gave cheerful, deep-toned whistles to the others. They sound like buses," murmured Gordon. "Or ships," smirked Henry. "You wouldn't be making fun of us, would ye?" Gordon and Henry jumped. "Oh no, no, no! Certainly not. Mind you, keep it that way." So Gordon and Henry did. The next day, Gordon arrived at the big station with the express. Duck was arranging Donald's goods trip, so Douglas offered to shut the coaches away. As he did, he began to worry. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. He thought, I couldn't hear a bike going by. Gordon's Express has a special coach for passengers wanting to travel on Thomas's branch line. It must be shunted separate from the others for Thomas to collect. Douglas was so preoccupied, he forgot the special coach. As the twins were having a drink, Thomas fussed. "Where's my coach?" 
What coach? The special coach Gordon brings for me. I must find it. Thomas was hardly out of sight when a mob of angry passengers erupted from the sidings, right out of the special coach. Gosh sakes, cried Douglas. They'll complain to the fat controller. Listen, whispered his driver hastily. I've got a plan. Soon, the fat controller and the station master came strolling over. They were most surprised with what they found. Donald's tender sat uncoupled behind Douglas, who they thought was Donald. Meanwhile, Donald, with Douglas's tender, had left with the goods. Ah, number nine, said the fat controller. Why have you not taken the goods? Fault in my tender, sir, replied Douglas. Ducky took the goods while it's mended. I see, said the fat controller. And why did number ten leave so suddenly? Perhaps, sir, said Douglas. He saw you coming and thought he was late. At that moment, Percy came puffing up. Douglas, where would you like my stone trucks? Percy had meant to say Donald, but he'd forgotten which number belonged to which twin. Just leave them there, replied Douglas, absent-mindedly. I'll... Douglas, thundered the fat controller. Both engines went pale. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? S sir I... I see what's happened here, interrupted the fat controller. He turned to the station master. Please tend to the passengers. I shall handle this. Douglas? When did you become number nine? That will be all, Percy, finished the fat controller. Off you go. Percy scampered away as quickly as he could. Douglas was left in no doubt as to what the fat controller thought of the trick. And suffice to say, his worries only worsened.